Find the straightaway above number one. Five twenty-three. Approaching one. Taking a curve. In 1963, with my brakeman and I, Bob Husher, were on a recruiting trip up in northern New York State, just out of Lake Placid, New York, in a little town called Saranac Lake. After a full day of recruiting at one of the schools in that area, we found ourselves uh, checking into our hotel, the same hotel we always stayed at. And as we uh, entered the hotel lobby, we heard quite a bit of, of noise and carrying on in the cocktail lounge. We found that we had some 30 Air Force types that were in the city to, uh, to do some bobsledding in the Lake Placid area. And one thing led to another, and finally got ourselves introduced and the like, and uh, I met the gentleman who was, who was heading up their group uh, at that time, uh, Major General Perry Hoisington. In conversation, uh, the general indicated to me that it would be a great thing to get another branch of the military involved in the sport of bobsledding. And uh, at the time, being a JG, I turned to the general, and I said, well, general, uh, where do we get started? And he said, well, he says, Lieutenant, he said, uh, how about the top of the hill tomorrow morning? And so, uh, cheery aye aye, and... Uh, that's pretty much the way we got started. In 1965, less than two years after his chance meeting with General Perry Hoisington, Paul Lamy was selected to ride as number three man on a civilian sled out of Saranac Lake during the World Championships at San Moritz. Later that same year, the first Navy two man made his appearance on the ice at Lake Placid. The driver and captain of the team was Paul Lamy and his brake man, was his recruiting partner, Bob Husher. A dream had become a reality, and the sport the old timers call the champagne of thrills had a brand new competitor, the blue and gold. The sled run at Lake Placid, New York, is carved into the side of a densely wooded mountain called Mount Van Hovenberg. Some experts have called it the fastest and safest bobsled run in the entire world. Now, this may be open to some debate, but one other fact is true. While there are several courses in Europe, Mount Van Hovenberg is the only bobsled run in the entire Western Hemisphere a factor that has favored the more traveled and experienced European teams and frustrated more than a generation of Americans trying to compete in the sport. Two of the most prestigious events of the sledding season at Lake Placid are the National AAU and North American Championships for two and four men sleds. The North American being strictly a Canadian and American affair and normally the last race of the season. What do you think of the North American Championship? Well, it's, it's one of our most important races of the year. Uh, everyone likes to win all the races they can. Uh, this, is, this one's a little bit more important than most of them because we have two countries involved, you know, Canada and the United States. I think they, it's a good idea. It's a good chance for North Americans to get together. Um, it's also good it picks the teams for the World Cup next year. It means the closing of the season, which is... Uh, kind of a disappointment because it's usually the last race and everybody really puts their heart into it and it's uh it means a lot to every competitor and we're going to try and win it 
Oh, I think they're a great uh, opportunity for us to uh, develop our own teams, both in Canada and the States, and also to um, provide some competition here. Uh, it isn't that easy to develop people with only one run in North America, but racing is the name of the game, and you have to get it wherever you can. Starting with their twin victories in the national AAU and North American races in 1967, the team of Lamy and Husher amassed an amazing string of seven straight wins in both events over the same number of years. Now, during the first week of March, 1974, less than a month after winning the national for the eighth consecutive time, they were back at Lake Placid looking for that last victory. The other half of the twin kill, making it eight double wins in a row. Who do you think are your toughest competitors here? I think of a two-man, uh, number one would be a Navy, Paul Lamy. Uh, we c consistently have a better start time than Paul and Bob, but Paul's been driving here for seven years, and he knows the track really well. There's Paul Lamy from the Navy, uh, Jimmy Morgan from Saranac Lake, Colin Nelson from Canada. All of these, these fellows are real good fighters. Colin Nelson and Hans Gerig from Canada and Paul Lamy from the American Navy is, uh, I think, are the three top right now in the two men. And it could be any one of them. I think we'll take it. Well, I think our toughest competitors probably will be uh, Colin Nelson from Ottawa, um, Paul Lamy from the Navy, um, Jim Hickey from the Air Force, and probably uh, Mike Holrock from uh, Lake Placid. Now, uh, Paul Lamy Navy hasn't been driving the four-man this year, practice very much, so... We don't know much about Paul or how he'll be driving in the four-man. Well, I just have to wait until, until Sunday to see how that sort of works itself out. This year, I believe we're going to win it because, uh, well, I guess we just got what it takes. We're just going to go up there and take it from the hill. I think probably the most important thing that uh, a good driver needs to have is it's real good, quick reflexes. If you don't have good reflexes in a sport like bobsledding, you're just not going to cut the mustard. You've got to be able to get yourself in and out of trouble uh, very, very quickly. I've had people tell me that uh, I've gone into uh, the sequence of turns called zigzag uh, in, uh, in, every, uh, in every configuration that you can get into, excepting backwards and upside down. And uh, uh, my goodness, uh, some of those have been my best trips through that corner come out nice and clean and, and the only way you can do that is to is to be able to just take the situation as it confronts you or is uh, is laid out to you right at the moment when it happens if you're banging off the left wall or the right wall going into the turn improperly uh, you have to adapt to the situation and, and drive that corner you haven't got much time to think about it it's a matter of doing it and reacting right away and so reflexes truly are uh, are probably one of the greatest assets uh, a bobsled driver can handle In bobsledding, speed is the name of the game. Its risks are as inherent as they are visible, and its dangers are inbred. Few men participate in the sport, either in this country or on the continent. Consequently, most of them know each other very well, and most of them long ago determined just what it is that gets the really good ones to the top. Good ones like Bob Husher, the lead brakeman of the Navy's two- and four-man squads. In my estimation, Bob Husher is probably the finest, most knowledgeable brakeman on that bobsled run uh, here at Mount Van Hovenberg. Bob, uh, through years and years of experience of working with me, uh, has blended very, very nicely with me so that we are truly a, a unit. Bob uh, and I are not always getting the fastest starts on the hill, but our starts are good enough to make them extremely competitive and then comes in the knowledge, experience, and uh, the feel for being a good brakeman that Bob has, and he helps me down the hill very, very much. There are many times where we may be getting off a turn a little bit late. Bob knows exactly what to do on the back of that sled to keep us right side up. Many people ask, what is the job of the brakeman? Well, sometimes it, it can be easy if you just define it as getting the sled off the top of the mountain, and then when it gets down to the bottom, stopping it. This may be true, but uh, there's a lot that happens in between. I think there has to be a continuity between the driver and the brakeman, and that brakeman must be aware of every moment where he is on that track, because when something happens, it'll happen fast. 
On an off day, or when time permits, the team goes out on the Lake Placid ice to work on fast starts and push-ups. The belief being that the fast start is 50% of the race. An understood part of the Navy's success equation has always revolved around one word, practice, constant practice. With both the two and four man sleds, the start is very important. The difference between winning and losing can sometimes be just one one hundredth of a second. If a team gets off the top of the hill, 30 one hundredths of a second faster than anyone else in the field, and that team does it each of the four runs, you're cutting almost two seconds off everyone else's time. Next sled on the line, a four-man racing team in the United States Navy. Paul Lamy driving, Bill Renton, Dennis Sprinkle, and Bob Husher on the brakes. Clear the track to the mile. All the people on the run who have cameras, please do not use flashballs. Look at it, clear. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby. Cut. One, two, three. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Men that are picked to be members of the United States Navy bobsled team are gents that are really in top physical condition. I have turned to organizations that have that kind of quality in physical fitness in their men, in particular the Navy SEAL team. Uh, I have three members uh, of the team, of the six members on the team, three of them are SEALs. Billy Renton, presently assigned to SEAL Team 2 at the Naval Amphibious Base in Little Creek, Virginia. Bill has been riding as number two man on the four-man sled, and this year, He's received his license as a two-man bobsled driver. Dennis Sprinkle, also with the Navy SEAL team. He's big, and he's versatile. Not only a fine brakeman, Sprinkle has the natural ability of getting the sled off the top as quickly as anyone in the business. His teammates are convinced he'll wind up becoming one of the best drivers as well. Billy Colson, a bobsled veteran of five years and another SEAL team member. Colson is this year's and last year's number two driver. He was a member of the 1972 Olympic team and a member of the 1971 World Bobsled Team at Chavinia, Italy. And finally, Fred Fritsch, new to the team this year, but like the others, not new to underwater demolition. Fritsch is brake man on the two-man sled and has ridden the number two and number three positions on the four-man sled. Another facet of the Navy team's winning formula is sled preparation and a place to do it. We're quite particular with our equipment. Unlike most of the other teams, I guess, uh, we're fortunate in having a place to work on our equipment. Our equipment has got to be available to us at any time. If we feel like going down to the, to the garage and working after dinner, it's nice to have our equipment right here with us, not out at the bobsled run, which is 11 miles away. The search for imperfections in the sled shack, like a loose connection, a nick in a runner, or a sign of metal fatigue, also has other benefits. It creates Esprit, a feeling of togetherness toward a common goal, an emotional edge for that certain tomorrow when it all has to come together. March 2nd, 1974, race day, the North American two-man sled championship. By the end of the third heat, the Navy two-man was leading the field but their margin was precariously slim. Another American team, headed by Wade Whitney of Keene Valley, New York, was just over a hundredth of a second off the pace. So, on this last time down the hill, Lamy and Husher both knew that it had to go perfectly. There was no margin for error, not if they wanted it all. With 10 or 15 sleds, there's a lot of waiting. 
And a lot of waiting means a lot of thinking. You're listening to everyone else's times. In particular, you're listening to those times that you think are the times of those people that are your true competitors. Next sled on the line, a two-man racing team in the United States Navy. Paul Lamy driving, Bob Husher on the brakes. Clear the track to the mile. The track is clear. Okay, Billy, thank you. Is that all right, buddy? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. This time. Hey, hey, hey! Let's go! Let's go. Get out of here. On the last day, Bob, number one, sir. It was over. Eight straight wins in both the national and North American races in eight years. Now just ahead was Trivenia, Italy, and the World Championships, followed by the International at Innsbruck. A good showing in both would probably mean an invitation to the 76th Winter Olympics, the third straight Olympic tour. But victory for the Navy the North American foreman wasn't to be. Against 13 other entrants, the blue and gold would miss a third place showing by only four one hundredths of a second. But it had been a good season. And there was always next year. Next year. Maybe then they'd have nine double wins in a row. The traditional Navy bobsled team toast to our two new drivers today. Lots of success to both of you, and continued success to the Navy team. Yeah. All right. <laughs>